In those days, the BBC wasn't allowed to say any trade names on, the, on, on, on air. Oh, it is, and, and it is very much a whole, it, a huge industry. Yeah. So, and we persuaded the BBC that it wasn't, a, it wasn't a trade name. It was just, well, everybody knows Spam. spam. You know, so, well, uh, it is. I mean, Spam is, you know, it's, it's, it's a meat by one specific company. This is the yeah. Spam cookbook, by the way. Uh, Hormel. Hormel. <laughs> <by Hormel. laughs> the classiest item of all is the Spam porcupine. Um, just for those, for those cocktail parties where things really need to be out. And there's even, you can get a fancy dress costume uh, of a Spam. Uh, of a spam tip. No, yeah, God, no, it's quite. Joking. Oh, no, no, for whatever, $29.99. This yeah. is it. There we go. <laughs> it's quite classy. You will be the hit of the party. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> and what I particularly love is one size fits most. <laughs> As long as you're big and square. Big and square. Take that off. I, I did say that the, uh, the, the Spam company was actually in, in trouble sort of at, when, at the time when we did the sketch. And actually there was a, a report in an advertising magazine saying that uh, the, the sketch had actually rescued Spam from oblivion. They were actually about to discontinue it. Really? And, and sales went up afterwards. <laughs> That's quite a burden. <laughs> it is. I, uh, <laughs> it's one of the great things I regret. <laughs> It is bewildering when you meet fans who have simply learned everything off for a bat. Yeah, yes, I think, I think probably the fans are better at remembering the lines than we were. Yes, that's probably true. Okay, well, I'm going to do a quick quiz here, right? Just oh, to God. see. Just to see what you remember from classic lines. Oh. And well, there's a prize, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, we have to give you a prize. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's finish this line off. He's not the Messiah. Oh, no, that one. He's a very naughty boy. Very that's good. Easy, easy. I cut down trees, I skip and jump, I like to press wild flowers. I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. Very good. <laughs> you wrote the Lumberjack song, didn't uh, you? Yes, <laughs> yes, Mark and I wrote the Lumberjack song. Yeah. Okay. We shall say knit to you if you do not appease us. Well, what is it you want? We want... Shrub a shrubbery. Shrubbery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shrubbery. <laughs> snap, snap, grin, grin, wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> Very good. Say no more. You win the big prize and oh, this is your prize. Terry, if you take home. Oh, great! Thank you very much. Let's move to 1975. You're directing the first proper Monty Python film, The Holy Grail. Uh, if you could turn back time, what would you change about the filming? Oh, the film. Well, there was a, some scenes. There was a, actually a scene that I was very fond of about King Brian the Wild. And we just couldn't afford to shoot it. It, was, it all started with, uh, you cut to this sort of a close harmony group, all singing in close harmony. Oh, in the merry month of May, in the merry month of May. And then suddenly they all get filled with arrows. <laughs> they, all, they all get killed by that. And then you cut to uh, this king, King Brian the Wild, going, Whoa! <laughs> oh, bring on the next close harmony group. And then, uh, <laughs> and then a very anxious Chancellor comes up and says, Oh, sire, we, uh, there, are, there are no more close harmony groups. And King Brian sort of gets real, What? <laughs> there are no more close harmony groups. Anyway, then, so he has his, has his liver taken out, and, and he's just about to have this man executed, and uh, they suddenly hear uh, Robin's minstrels in the distance, you see, and uh, the Chancellor comes running up to Robin's minstrels, saying, Would you come and sing for King Brian the Wild? And they say, Sing for King Brian the Wild? You must be joking. And he says, no, no, he's calmed down a lot now. He's really calmed down an awful lot. And they say, is that your liver? He says, no, 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 I'm fine, no, I'm fine. <laughs> and that all got lost. We couldn't, yeah, we couldn't shoot that, unfortunately. We just didn't have enough money to do it. Uh, but, I mean, actually, not having enough money, I mean, it did mean that we, uh, we didn't even think about having horses. So, uh, you know, the idea of just sort of prancing around. And, <laughs> yeah. that, that entire horses thing is just because you didn't have the budget for it? Well, it, it was the joke. It was the original joke. It was the coconuts thing. It was the original joke that actually started the whole thing off, actually. I mean, that's where it all came from. But then we kind of thought at one point, well, obviously, we'll, wear, we'll have horses when you get into it properly. When we looked at the budget, we thought... No, we won't have horses. No, no, no. <laughs> it, did, it, it did lead to quite brilliant stuff. I think we can actually have a snap to that there. Halt! Who goes there? It is I, Arthur, son of Uther Pendragon from the castle of Camelot. We have ridden the length and breadth of the land in search of knights who will join me in my court at Camelot. What? Ridden on a horse? Yes. You're using coconuts. What? You've got two empty halves of coconut and you're banging them together. 
Actually, the other thing is, you know, after a while, I, I don't notice that on horses, actually. I just sort of, you just accept it after a while. Other scenes, then, were affected uh, by your lack of budget. Well, there was a rabbit, yes, I seem to remember, that we couldn't quite afford a real, you know, we couldn't afford to buy a rabbit. Things are pretty bad when you can't afford to buy a rabbit. You can't afford to buy your own rabbit, no. Um, well, we could buy a dead one, but we wanted a live one, you know. <laughs> um, so where did you get the rabbit? Uh, well, we, we borrowed one from, uh, from somebody who lived nearby where we were filming. <laughs> and, uh, you didn't knock on doors and go, is there any chance you have a rabbit? I, I think that's what happened, exactly what happened. And uh, this very nice lady, uh, you know, gave us her pet rabbit to film. And, of course, what we hadn't told her was that we had to cover it in blood. And uh, when she got him back, she freaked out. Oh, what have you done to my rabbit? It, it is one of the great from real rabbit to stunt rabbit kind of transitions. It in is. The it's film. very skillful. It's, it's very it? yes. beautifully done. Yeah, you've got, you've got the real rabbit, then you've got the uh, the puppet rabbit over the over the shield. It's very big, big special effect. Oh, let, let's watch the joints. We can count off the rabbit here. <laughs> Go on, boys. Chop his head off. Right, silly little beater. One rabbit suit coming right up. Look. Oh, it's just a harmless little bunny, isn't it? Well, it's always the same. I always oh, tell them, up. do they listen to me? Hi. Oh, no. Shut oh. You can see why she was a bit miffed about her pet rabbit being all over ended up in that condition. You read it, it literally ended up dosed in blood. Yes, it? it did. Yes, what did you do for the blood then? Uh, oh, it's what they call Kensington gore. But it, it takes a bit of washing off. I don't know whether she ever got around. And also, washing a rabbit is quite difficult, I expect. This is just a case of lift and dunk, <laughs> uh, essentially, <laughs> how you wash a rabbit, like, around a couple of times. Well, and, then, and then you drip them down like yes, that. <laughs> Or you just put it in the washing machine, hold it by the ears, and let the washing machine just fall over the Aww. Damn it, lover. Yeah. <laughs> the very first film you did. Oh, was the very first yeah. film is I, I bought a, an 8mm uh, camera, and uh, I was back home at my parents' place, and, uh, and my dad suggested this scenario with uh, some deck chairs. And this is the very the, first piece of film you ever, ever directed? Ever, first piece of film I ever directed. Also, the only film I ever made with my dad. <laughs> oh, this is it. Months later. <laughs> Probably weren't even your deck chairs where they had to borrow them. Some, some, some woman next door. Have you been ever tempted to go back and uh, do a George Lucas and re-edit the early shows? Because we we thought we'd take the liberty uh, and just see what it would look like, um, Holy Grail, yeah. if you had the money for horses. <laughs> so this, for the first time, is Holy Grail with horses. <laughs> Obviously, that's all we could afford to do. Uh, so, that's but, amazing. But that is what it would look like. The, uh, there we go. Once about the Holy now with added horses. Oh, that's great. So the show is all about turning back time, but when we yeah. said to you, is there anything you'd like to do if you really could turn back time, you went a long, long way back, didn't you? Someone you'd like to be if you had the chance? Yes, I was thinking about uh, Geyserich. Okay, you're going to have to explain it more than that. Geyserich, think, well, to, uh... well, Geyserich was uh, king of the Vandals, um, and uh, he was actually, he seems to be quite a nice chap. He was uh, reputed to be the wisest of all men. He was, uh, he reigned for 70 years, which by my reckoning is a pretty good whack of reigning. Yeah. Um, and uh, 